this is I don't Ugh. how do I even review this hi everyone my name is Holly and in today's video I'm going to be attempting to give you a spoiler free review for The Hot King by Josiah Bancroft which is the third book in the Books of Babel series and thankfully not the last I actually thought that this was a trilogy and then Josiah told me on Twitter that there's going to be a fourth Book, and I might have screamed in Dothraki at that moment. This is an arc that was sent to me from Orbit, so thank you so much to them. It was such a kind of gesture for them to do that. It was a total surprise because this book doesn't come out until January 22nd. So you just have a little bit of a wait. It's really hard to figure out where to begin with this review, and I don't have an obsessive personality whatsoever, but it's going to become very clear as this review progresses that this book made me that way. I'm not proud. That's just how it's gonna be. I'll start off by saying that I felt enveloped by this book. It's very rare for me to be able to pick up a book and be immediately submersed into the story, but this world is for sure my favorite place to be. And it's very hard to be unhappy when you're in the greatest setting to ever be created. Obsessiveness is already pretty strong here, as you can tell. If you're new here and don't know what I'm talking about let me set the plot for you really quick and actually I have a spoiler free review for the first one uh, Sin Lina Sins which is right here so I will link that on the screen or down below in the description box if you're interested in watching that. So the story actually begins following a school headmaster named Thomas Sinlin, and he lives in a very small fishing village with his new bride Mara and they decide to go to the Tower of Babel for their honeymoon. Now this tower is extremely iconic and it's basically a structure that penetrates through the clouds and it's made up of all of these ringdoms, basically kingdoms, that are are stacked on top of one another like layers on a cake. A good example obviously is the map and I could literally tattoo this on my face. So once Tom and Mara take the train and arrive at the tower, they are then immediately lost within this ginormous and chaotic market that is at the base of the tower. And this begins the plot as Tom enters the tower and tries to find her. And even before he enters, he is warned that once you go in, you will never come back out. There is even this wall before the entrance that has thousands and thousands of names on it from lost loved ones. So Tom has his warnings, but he obviously needs to find the woman that he loves. There's really nothing else I can say plot-wise because of spoilers for this third book, but the stakes have been risen, let me assure you. Our knowledge of this world is expanding. In fact, the steampunk elements are a lot more common in this installment. Our characters are actually having to use that technology to advance in their their mission. One thing in particular that the author kept bringing up is the mechanical sun that the characters glance up to see in the fabricated sky, as well as mechanical moths that our characters transport messages back to one another. It's just so fascinating. A lot of books I can predict or at least have a theory of what might happen but for this series i absolutely cannot and i would never have it any other way this author is from another planet that has come to grace us with an original idea conspiracy theory maybe well he has at least created this massive story with constantly moving parts and various characters. In many ways it's a mystery as multiple investigations are going on within this tower that play a massive role in the story being told like obviously Tom trying to find his wife but like how the tower is multi-layered so are all of the secrets. We even got to meet one of the authors of the handbook that Sinlin carries throughout the entire first book. It's called the Every Man's Guide to the Tower of Babel. I think I got that right. By the way, I read this so fast and it's just over 600 pages and I'm not by any means a fast reader at all. By the way, I want to mention that there is a fellow book reviewer who I am a huge fan of. His name is James Tivendale and he's one of the book reviewers for Fantasy Book Review. I'll link the website down below for you. But he was reading this book 
as well at the same time as me and we were literally like reading at the same pace as one another and even when I would update my status on Goodreads literally like a minute later he would update his status and we were pretty close in page count so we kind of ended up being accidental buddy readers which is so funny I always looked forward to his statuses and what he thought and then we would comment about oh my god this book is so good it was just so fun anyways back to the review now the structure of this book is totally different than the first two in fact it's separated within three parts and we even get multiple character perspectives which I loved so much and the characters the whole time were just out of reach from one another but ultimately they have the same goal in the end all of these characters are just so intensely lovable Valletta for instance has an entire large section all about her that we're focusing on she's so immature and is a rebel and does not follow orders but she is just such a good person at her core who is so kind to those around her she was just adorable and then we have Irene who is her bodyguard slash kind of mother and I kind of think of her as like a tank of a woman but she's very fluffy inside the hot king played out as a true ensemble cast as for criticisms are you really asking me that <laughs> Um, there is none. I'm not kidding. This is truly one of the best books that I have ever read and I'm a very critical reviewer. I like to think of myself as that and to say that this book is truly perfect says a lot. I honestly see a lot of future fantasy writers being inspired by Josiah Bancroft's writing. If I was a writer, I know I would be. So that is it for my review. I really hope you enjoyed. I will link all of these books down below in the description box for you if you are interested. You should be. Please give Sinlin Sins a chance. It got nominated in the Goodreads Choice Awards for a reason this year. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up because it helps me out so, so much. And don't forget to subscribe. I upload videos every single week. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'm at Holly Hearts Books and on Twitter at Holly Niece. And until we meet again, happy reading.